Welcome to the Inspire to Invest podcast, where we're sharing stories from real estate investors and how investing has changed their lives. This episode of Inspire to Invest has been brought to you by Honeybee Development Group and Synergy Mastermind. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Inspired to Invest podcast. This is actually our first episode with a guest, and I'm so excited to interview Kunal. And I'm going to read just a short bio to introduce him, and then he can, of course, tell us all the great things about himself. So Kunal, he is a pharmacist full-time, but he's also a very passionate real estate transaction engineer, self-proclaimed. He was born and raised in India, and he moved to Canada in 2009 as a student. And giving back and inspiring others to invest in real estate is part of his purpose. So I think that's perfectly fitting for our first episode with our guest. Kunal started investing in real estate as a fix and flip investor back in 2016. Now he's focused on helping other friends and family unlock the power of real estate by investing in cash flowing properties. And he actually has over 40 properties under his belt. So with no further delays, uh, Kunal, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words. That is a great intro, Serena. I think I don't need to, you know, we're done here. The interview <laughs> is done because you did a, such an awesome job with the with the uh, intro. So yeah, as I as you mentioned in the bio, I started with fix and flip, uh, you know, in the real estate game. I'm a pharmacist uh, working um, as a pharmacist. Well, actually, I did a master's after my pharmacy degree, so got into the e health space. That's where I primarily spend my eight hours a day, kind of thing. Wow. And then uh, remaining is all about uh, real estate investing. Um, started with fix and flip, then got into uh, you know buy and hold, and then joint venture partnerships and stuff like that. So. The journey has been phenomenal, and I am very happy with uh, where I'm at with the real estate, what it has done for me, and all the lives I have impacted, because that's what I feel is the real gift when it comes to uh, investing in real estate. There's just so much, uh, so many lives you can impact by, you know, uh, investing in this vehicle called real estate. Yeah, I find that interesting. So obviously, you have your job during the day. And a lot of times people call the role of a real estate investor, they're six to 10. <laughs> so that's <probably laughs> yeah, I like the that. term or other people might have different hours and stuff like that. But that's not uncommon that a lot of people will keep their job, they'll keep their security, and they've got their paychecks coming in. But that's a great segue into real estate investing so that you kind of have the best of both worlds. And eventually, as you start to build your portfolio, maybe that Maybe something that you reconsider down the road, but I'd say the majority of people do start with that safety net. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of your family and friends, so you mentioned impacting them. Can you shed a little bit more light on some of the things that they've done by following your lead and getting involved? Yeah, I feel like I uh, have done that in, in various means. So an example would be, I always like to kind of bring examples, real life examples. One of my neighbors uh, was very intrigued by what I'm doing in the real estate space. And he was renting at the time. And I was able to kind of coach him, mentor him to, first of all, get his first property, like his mm -hmm. primary residence, and then get two additional rental properties mm -hmm. ongoing. And, and this has been, I think I've been mm -hmm. mentoring for like last three years. So I believe there are people all around us that we can support, mentor, guide in whatever way, shape or form we can. I mean, it's only two properties that he home, that he has as investment properties, but hey, it's, he's still growing. He didn't go through any of the education that I went through. He didn't, you know, go do fix and flips like me, but he's got two rental properties under his belt. So yeah. I believe that I... I tend to do that. Whoever would listen to me, uh, in, even if I'm going to pick up like a food at a restaurant, uh, if, if they are going to give me a listening ear, I will share yeah. what I have done in real estate investing and tell them about it and see how I can kind of leave them better than how they met, how I met them uh, in the conversation kind of thing. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, I people don't know what they don't know, right? Exactly. And rent is honestly, it's a four letter word for a reason. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you got to get people out of there if you can. So obviously you've got a lot of experience, but what was the catalyst for you to decide, you know, obviously you've got a respectful, respectable, like reputable career. So what was that catalyst to really move over into real estate investing as well? 
I think early on in my, even in my pharmacy career, I realized that just doing a job, just having like, you know, climbing up the corporate ladder, let's say, will not get me to where I want to go in my, in my goals in life. And every book I pick up and read has like the, every millionaire, I kind of hear, hear their story. And I'm like, they all have something to do with real estate in their, yeah. in their journey, in their portfolio in some way, shape or form. So real estate has always been uh, something that, has been at the back of my mind kind of nagging me, hey, you got to get, get into this thing called real estate investing. And also, even like if I were to go back, and I've recently actually had a chance to reflect on this as a kid, whoever I saw was super wealthy or were doing really well in their life, they had a big real estate portfolio, including mm-hmm. my father-in-law. Yeah. So I was just like, well, I got to get into this and figure out how to kind of make it happen. Now, like, you know, um, like most people, I think I didn't start with a whole lot of money bags to kind of, you know, get into the game. Yeah, I started investing in real estate with credit card debt. Now, I know I'm sharing this with the open, <laughs> wide public kind of thing, but I started with uh, like lots of people ask me, how did you get started with investing in real estate when you didn't have a whole lot of savings? Well, I started with over $100,000 worth of credit card debt. Yeah. But that was invested in a flip and I knew that I'm working with the right person. So I had yeah. that sense of security because I was partnering with someone who had experience. Yeah. And because they had the experience, I felt I felt okay with taking on that credit card debt to do this flip. We did the flip in about a couple of months. We um basically uh, sold the flip, made money, and I was able to pay off my credit card debt and everything yeah. was um, you know, onward and upward from there. Yeah. But it was a risk. And I just did what I had to do to get started. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the main thing is that you got started, right? So I think right. so, many, so many people are just afraid to take that first step, but that's really like the entry point, right? So I think more people just need to to jump in and it doesn't mean you don't, you know, you take calculated risks, right? So I think, you know, anyone would look at those numbers and yes, you're paying that debt, but what's the reward on the other side if it goes well? And also play in like, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? Because there's tangibility in real estate, like maybe worst case you break even, right? So like you kind of want to run those numbers appropriately just to make sure that you are proceeding with caution, I guess you could say. Yes, absolutely. So obviously you have so much experience, really, really diverse. What would you say is your biggest success to date and what made that so successful for you? I would say I've done a lot of different strategies in real estate investing. Like I did fix and flip and then I um, started doing, uh, which is also fix and flip, but really converting single family to duplexes and doing the Mm -hmm. birds and then eventually got into plain, simple buy and hold. And what has been, you know, uh, the biggest success for me has been impacting lives. That's what matters more to me than anything ever will. An example, again, would be a picture that I got from one of my joint venture partners of their daughter. I believe she's eight now, mm-hmm. holding a few pictures of uh, properties we own together because I sent them sent them some pictures of the properties we own together. Yeah. And she's holding them and her mom writes at the bottom, this little kid is going to go to college because of you, Kunal. Oh, that, oh, just pulling out the heartstrings. Exactly. Yeah. That means more to me. That I think is is my is my purpose is to impact lives. And real estate yeah. is investing is just a vehicle. It's yeah. simply a vehicle. That's how I look at it. And I think it's just the lives we can touch and impact by, you know, investing in real estate. And yeah. I mean, I can share multiple stories like that, but the ones that I keep close to my heart are the ones that where I felt like I get a heartwarming message like that, yeah. you know, which, which means the word to me. And I think it will mean more to me always, yeah. even more than any kind of transaction. I do any amount of money I make, whatever yeah. I own, doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's the people, the lives that I get to impact by investing in real estate. That's yeah, my no, that resonates success, with me I as think. well. <laughs> so amazing. Um, so obviously that would be one of the successes, but have you had any, you know, tough lessons to learn and what would those have been along the way? Um, sometimes I think we all as investors, as uh, entrepreneurs, we just like to grow too big too soon as much as possible. We'd like the speed element. Mm-hmm. So some of my tough lessons has been, um, there was a time in my life where I realized that, you know what, I have these these properties that I've built up and I have equity in all these properties. So let's, I don't know why at the time, but it felt smart to go take on some second mortgages to grow my portfolio even further. 
Yeah. I went and used those second mortgages to kind of park some money in my account and go buy more property. Mm-hmm. And that was a, a smart move. It just basically uh, put me in a little bit of a pickle where I had the second mortgage debt, which I was hoping to pay from my my job income. But we forget that, you know, the, the well, there's the household that I have to run as well. But in yeah. general, what it is that investing like cash, uh, real estate is a cash flow poor equity rich business right so <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> where you are exactly yeah. exactly so you know the equity is there but really i can't go spend that equity to pay off these second mortgages that easily yeah. so i was in a bit of a pickle and i think i realized that you know i tried different multiple ways the only way to kind of get out of that and get back into that growth phase for myself was to kick a few properties out the door. So I sold three yeah. properties, got out of that. And uh, I think that was a big lesson for me is that it's it's a, it's a slow game and you just got to take it that way. You got to, you yeah. know, slowly acquire as many as you can with joint venture partners, I think is, is a great way to kind of grow. And that's where I really shifted. And I was like, well, I can't do all of this on my own. The second mortgage debt and using that debt to kind of, you know, uh, go buy more property isn't the right move. So joint venture partnerships are a much better way to grow your portfolio Mm -hmm. than doing it with the second mortgage debt. So that's been an obstacle. That's been a learning and uh, definitely came out looking much better than it was uh, by selling those three properties to get out of the pickle I was in. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Do you ever look back and you think there's something that you wish you would have done differently along the way? I would say that early on, even before I got into investing, I think I know this is going back much back further, but I always had the you know mindset where I don't want to share my profits with anyone. I just want to keep it all. I just want yeah. to keep it all. I call it the orange versus the watermelon kind of mindset, right? Like yeah. I want the whole orange. I don't want to give it up. I just don't want to give it up. I just want to keep it all. And a lot of us struggle with that mindset. And if I were to go back to my former self, I would give them a lesson. It would be always try to find a way to get a slice of a watermelon and try to shoot for the orange because you're going to do so much better. Yeah. The interesting part is like, it, and what that is essentially in a short kind of in a word is, partnerships yeah they can actually help you advance in your journey so much faster if you get well, it's like the, the quote right like if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together so exactly. I think it just depends I can understand why you know even for myself having been in business with a partnership that ended in a way that I just didn't expect you know my partner left four years in for personal reasons but nobody goes into a partnership necessarily with the end in mind. So I think from a real estate perspective, if you are going to joint venture with someone, you just want to very clearly outline all those things in your joint venture agreement, because you just never know the way that things will go. Right. And I think being very clear about those responsibilities and the expectations, like someone's just the money partner, obviously they shouldn't be shouldering some of that work. And I have heard about that in some instances where people are like, well, I was supposed to be the money partner, but then all of a sudden I was doing this and I was doing that. And you know, you just want to make sure those responsibilities don't get blurred. But I think if you can be strategic and grow the right way, then obviously you can have not to say infinite, but you know, you can really, really expand probably beyond anything that you can do completely by yourself. Oh, absolutely. I feel like you can really expand. It's like, I I call it like putting a puzzle together. You have some pieces of the puzzle, someone else has some other pieces of the puzzle and you can just complete more puzzles if you choose to work (laughs) with other people, essentially. And advance yeah. in your journey because everybody gets to kind of in, like both parties, multiple parties, whoever's kind of getting involved, they all yeah. get to go faster. So I'm a big believer, big proponent for partnerships. And I wasn't uh, when I was starting. And I feel like it took me a bit of a, it was a slower start because I just wasn't open to partnerships. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And on that note, we're just going to take a very brief pause just for a word from our sponsors. Hi, everyone. My name is Alejandra and I'm Mimi and together Alejandra and I lead Honeybee Development Group where we deliver exceptional results for properties and projects in the development sector. So as co-owner of Honeybee Development Group, I'm here to inspire you. I'm here to give you all the words of encouragement to say, yes, you can do it and start today. Don't wait until tomorrow. Build a strong support system and a network around you. Real estate is not a one person game. It takes a lot of minds to collaborate. So have the right accountants, lawyers, the network of support 
that can help you and answer your questions so you don't make some very expensive mistakes. Every real estate investor started somewhere. So please visit our website, honeybeedevelopment.com and then let's see where the universe is going to take you. Just get that first step. Thanks again for following along with this episode of Inspired to Invest. In addition to real estate, investing, and running my own brand experience agency for 18 years, I also published a book called The Accidental Entrepreneur in October of 2021. This is my story, and it chronicles how I turned tragedy into triumph to embrace my destiny in entrepreneurship. If you're interested in picking up a copy, you can find the link at serenahomesrealtor.com, and you can also find my link tree with all of the retailers in the details below. Thanks again for your support. Are you interested in taking your real estate investing business to new levels? Do you want to be a part of an elite group of real estate investors from across the country? Would you benefit from a network of highly motivated individuals to help you with the resources and accountability you need? Enrollment is now open for Canada's number one real estate investing mastermind, Synergy Mastermind. For more information and to secure one of our remaining spots for Synergy Mastermind, apply now at synergymastermind.ca. And welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Again, we have Kunal here and he's sharing his wealth of experience with us. Now, obviously we talked about some of your successes and challenges. Now, when you think about obstacles, what do you think is really the biggest obstacle that you've faced so far? And maybe one that you could perceive that you could face in the future going ahead. I think uh, one thing that I I face, constantly face, and I still feel like I'm still working on it is managing operations within the business i feel you know let's say following up on the property manager to make sure that this one gets listed for rent because uh the you know uh lease term is coming up and the tenant maybe wants to renew maybe doesn't but following mm -hmm. up right so yeah. tasks like that the operations i find you know i want to grow i want to grow 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 do expand do more things but yeah. most, like oftentimes i find my operations really pulls me down and mm -hmm. I find it hard and challenging a little bit to delegate some of those tasks because yeah. I, I call it tacit knowledge. It's up here in my head and it's hard to delegate. At least right now, I feel it's a little bit hard to delegate. So I kind of yeah. do it all. And I find that it's not helping me grow and it almost pulls me down. So yeah. that's a big obstacle. And I think um, a lot of us kind of, you know, run into that. And so what am I doing to overcome that really would be talking to other people who are ahead of me in the game. How I look at it is like, you know, I'm in this elevator, either I'm sending the elevator up by, you know, um, taking someone for a lunch or whatever, whoever's ab above me on a, a level above me, I'm going there, like spending time with them to learn from their yeah. journey and help myself elevate to the next level or i'm sending the elevator down yeah. to help someone else come from whatever level level they're on to the next level so i'm always in this elevator going up and down depending on yeah. what it is so for this obstacle in particular i would say i'm definitely sending my elevator up to try and learn from someone who's um who's ahead of me in the game who's done yeah. this longer and who's got more experience just to ask like how how do you delegate something like that yeah. So just kind of getting as much input, input as I can from uh, people um, that are in my circles. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. I mean, even having been in my business, it was not quite the same, but that was a challenge that I had because I was brought in for operations. So obviously, like I just wanted to go and plan all the events and and do all the things that I was brought in for. It's very, very difficult to just start delegating that. And I, I had to wrap my head around the fact that done is better than perfect. And I had to trust the people that were working for me. And we basically developed playbooks for every single component in our business. So that way, when we brought people in, they not only knew what had to happen, but how we expected it to be done for consistency. So that if one person was not there, well, we're all doing it the exact same. They should be able to go in that file and see exactly where their progress is at. And then we could duplicate all of those different things. And even when people were brand new, it was just less of a, a learning curve. So it was easier to onboard people and things like that. But I think at the end of the day, when you're the business owner, you're the property owner, there will always be things that come back to you. Like if the tenant is not 
uh, in place on time for the first of the month or they're not paying their rent, it's going to escalate to you. <laughs> so, right. you know, I think eventually that's where people will hire someone in an operations role to kind of mitigate and manage some of those things. But I think that's, you know, a challenge that everyone has at different levels and, you know, maybe 10 properties you could get here and then at 50 and then 200, like, you know, it requires kind of a different version of yourself and a different level of systems in place for each level of growth. And that's obviously why the masterminds and, you know, these education systems are all so important, right? Big time, big time. They're so super important, right? To just be your network. Or you need to elevate your network if you want to increase your net worth. Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. Now, what would you say is the best advice you've ever been giving when it comes to real estate investing? I would say um, if you feel stuck, shoot the puck. I, I I live by that, right? Like, I mean, That's again, I like to I like to I like to give examples for everything I say. Uh, an example would be just uh, the other day I was talking to a property owner and uh, trying to you know see what I could buy off of him. He's got a portfolio of fourteen properties and he wants to sell five or six maybe. Mm -hmm. So um, he was sharing that he's got uh, a land which is suited for a commercial build in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. Now. I have nothing to do with commercial build or commercial properties. That's kind of so outside my. Yeah, do you my mean multifamily for the commercial? No, I mean like an actual commercial. like office plaza, <laughs> plaza, <laughs> plaza kind of you know uh, more like a plaza where you yeah. could, it's suited for a medical office space or a vet veterinarian clinic or something like that. Okay, so something like those. I have nothing, no uh, business with that. But hey, yeah. it's 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 gonna sh uh, you know. I would take the take the chance because all I'm doing is connecting with a few people. Like I'm talking to a veterinarian this week to see if she would be interested in potentially looking at working together on this, right? Yeah. Because you never know where it could go. But yeah. I think it's a fine line though. Like I'm, I'm co constantly evaluating to make sure that I'm not looking at it as a shiny ball, because if I do that, then I'm not going to kind of, you know, progress in what I know best, yeah. which is res residential real estate yeah. per se. And um, how do I make sure that it, it, it kind of, you know, helps my goals. So like, that's what I'm evaluating is like making sure that this is going to help me advance closer to my goals faster in some yeah. way, shape or form. So yeah. that's why I'm just going to shoot the puck and see what happens. Right. Yeah. So yeah. The important conversation I'm going to have with this veterinarian in Edmonton, well-established, he's got two practices right now and probably looking at growing again. So yeah. I just reached out in my network you know asked who 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 knows someone who might be interested in some sort of a medical space and they asked me hey would you be open to talking to a veterinarian who's been looking to expand I'm like, yeah. yeah. so let's see so it's just yeah. you just never know where a conversation could take you so always be open to things like that but be mindful that we have to be always be in alignment with our goals and make sure that doing this or making this a success is going to help yeah. us advance closer to our goals kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want it just to be a, a distraction that you're stumbling. Through. Right. Now, obviously you've talked about growth and I think when it comes to investors, they almost become addicted to being like the number of doors, you know, or a certain amount. But I heard a question recently that I found really interesting. It was, you know, what's your freedom number, you know, at what point, and what value of your portfolio do you think would identify that for you? Meaning like maybe that's when you would lo lose your career as a pharmacist and just focus on this, or you could start, you know, dialing back and just, you know, traveling the world and living life or whatever it may be. But what would that freedom number be for you? That's a, that's an interesting question. And you're right. I am big time addicted, addicted to that growth element. And I feel like that number will always be growing. Right now, it's a $50 million portfolio, mm -hmm. but I know by the time I get to the 50 or closer, I just need bigger goals and, you know, to really daunt me and get me up from bed in the morning kind of yeah. thing, get me yeah. excited. And it, I think that number is always going to be growing because yeah. I think there's a lot of people, a lot of lives we can impact. Of course, we start with our own immediate family first, right? Like mm -hmm. taking care of them, like meaning your retirement, your kid's education, your immediate support for your kid, whatever it is that you want to do for your kid, for example. Yeah. We take care of that. And then we start kind of expanding outwards, like who else can we impact? And that's what kind of drives us. And I feel... Yeah that number for me is going to be always growing yeah. and getting out of my career, you know, um, let's just say it's coming soon, right? It's, uh, it's not a, uh, a firm timeline I've set on that, but I feel like I have to, 
I only have some, we all only have so much time in a day. Yeah. So I feel like I want to get to real estate investing full time um, yeah. relatively soon kind of thing. So it's definitely coming. Yeah. Um, but that number is always going to be growing right now. I can understand that because I feel yes. like you have those immediate needs where you're taking care of your family, your extended family, maybe friends and things like that. But then as things grow, you start thinking about your legacy and your generational wealth and, you know, the things that you're doing now that could literally support your grandkids and your great grandkids and people down the line and stuff like that. And that kind of an impact that you can have not only maybe within your family, but beyond that. So I think for entrepreneurs, it's, you know, everyone has that sense of purpose and fulfillment. And that again, is what drives us every single day. Right. Yeah. Now, I guess when you think back to before you got started on this journey, is there anything that you would have told your former self now knowing what you know? Uh, that's an interesting question. And I think that it would be take more chances and um, not really overanalyze. I think I was stuck in analysis paralysis a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you just can't know it all. You cannot know it all. Like when I go buy a property and, you know, this is what I'm speculating. The rent would be, this is what I'm speculating. The returns would be all that stuff. That's all the yeah. speculation. There's no way to nail that down and say, this is what it will exactly be. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, one thing I feel like um, I sometimes have been stuck in my journey in a little bit of analysis paralysis yeah. and that feeling where, you know, you feel like your car's stuck, your wheels are spinning, you're not really moving forward. Yeah. And I think we all need to just, you know, be open to taking more chances. Yes. You know, you, there are opportunities where you just, you know, you will fall on your face and I have fallen onto my face um, multiple times. We all have. And uh, it's, it's okay because yeah. you will either win or you will learn yeah. and that learning is worth something too. Yeah. And that's kind of the perfect segue to my next question. So uh -huh. you have a favorite quote that you'd like to share that could motivate some of our audience. Big time. I have this favorite one that I actually have posted on my wall too. I'll just read it. <laughs> so I say, exactly. If someone says you can't do it, do it twice and take pictures. That's yeah, my I love that favorite one. quote of all times. And it's got a, like, I'll, I'll share a picture with you. It's, it's a gorilla with like a crown and um, <laughs> like a big gold chains in his neck kind of thing. It's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know. I, I love quotes because and... they always resonate so strongly, right? And depending on yes. where you're at in your life, there's certain things that you're like, just gives you a sense of perspective in different ways, right? Big so time. thanks for sharing all of your learnings. Is there anything else that you wanted to leave with anyone who's watching right now? No, I would say that if anybody is interested in Edmonton at all, in any way, shape or form, if you're looking at investing in Edmonton, I love to support others in their journey. It's not just about, you know, partnering or, you know, let's kind of work together. I love to truly give back my time and support others in the community. So I just want to, you know, put that offer out. If there's anybody interested in Edmonton at all, even if remotely interested or just want to know I would love to, you know, set up some time with you and, um, you know, show you what what it is that I've done, what has worked for me. And then you can, you know, pick and choose and I can even potentially help you guide you in terms of, you know, what would make most sense for you, depending on where you're at in the journey. Awesome. And where can people find you? Uh, Facebook, Instagram are, I would say, um, my two uh, social media, you know, platforms that I'm quite active on. Um, right. But absolutely can share my I'll leave your handle in the yeah. comments below and okay. make sure uh thank you for joining us for today it's been so amazing just hearing about your experience and all your lessons and obviously for everyone that is watching thank you for taking the time today and if you've liked what you've watched make sure you subscribe to serena holmes realtor and on social we'll be sharing everything on inspired to invest podcast thanks for joining us thank you again to our sponsors honeybee development group and synergy mastermind for bringing you this episode of the Inspired to Invest podcast. The views represented on this podcast are for general information only and does not constitute investment or other professional advice or an offering of securities. The host and guests featured on Inspired to Invest make no representations as to the performance of any particular investment. Should you decide to make an investment, you are responsible for conducting your own review and analysis. It is recommended that you obtain independent legal, accounting, and tax advice from licensed professionals.